It's another episode of 10 Years in the Making. With me are Phoebe Yu and Kat Day, the co-founders of Etitude. Etitude is a material science company and sustainable lifestyle brand with proprietary patented lyocell made from 100% organic bamboo. Etitude's vision is to dramatically reduce the negative environmental impact of fibers by replacing viscose cotton and silk with a better alternative. Etitude is a certified carbon neutral company and it is a B Corp. So let's hop right in. <laughs> um, my question for you two, I love the immigrant women, women founder story because it's my 50% of my leadership team are women. Um, can we start with like a brief life story from each of you and what brought you together? Um, sure, I'm Phoebe, I'm the founder and CEO of Attitude. So I, um, I was born and raised in, in Shanghai, China, and then I moved to Melbourne, Australia. That's where I started to learn about sustainability and develop the passion to start it, to start Attitude, to develop more sustainable uh, textile for the home industry. Because uh, Australia is, is a very eco-conscious country. Um, uh, and then I moved to uh, Los Angeles in 2018 after I met Kat and Kat joined uh, the company as a co-founder. And we actually met online. So before COVID, everyone worked online remotely. We started like that because of we have most Australia office and here Los Angeles office. So can I ask you one question? Mm -hmm. What what made you want to be did anything about your upbringing in shanghai or the experience in melbourne call you to be an entrepreneur because a lot of people are participating in sustainability and they're not actually inventing things <laughs> yeah but I, I think it's more it's it's just personality i was kind of always want to do my own thing um so at the when well, my parents uh, like any asian ones want us to study uh, medicine. I said no. So I go to a business school. So it's always about you know follow what I want to do. Um, I guess that's entrepreneurship. And even including like uh, migrate to Australia, it's kind of yeah. It's always like hmm, what's interesting? What's what's the new way to do things? What's a new place can I explore? I guess that's entrepreneurship in heart. Why'd you go? Why'd you go to Australia? Oh uh, well, at the beginning actually to get a visa so it can easy to travel for my business. And I love travel, but then I love the country. I love the people. I love they're very sustainable. And I met also, also met my husband. <laughs> so I, I, I stayed, I'm, I'm Australian citizen. Um, uh, yeah, that that's what, what it is. It's actually, or a bit accidentally. Yeah. Got it. And Kat, how about you? So I'm also an immigrant, uh, so I was actually born in the middle of Russia in a small city and moved to the U.S. to New York with my family, my mom and my older sister when I was 13. So I ended up going to high school in New York City and um, going to college at Columbia. So I stayed in New York for a while, but I think my uh, immigrant background, but also my, my family background being very creative. I've always had a creative streak on the side, always had projects on the side in addition to school and, and in addition to work later down the road. I always had something that I wanted to express my creativity in. And I ended up going into business consulting because I was advised that that was the most creative thing you could do in business. Um, and it proved to be true. I learned a lot in terms of how to grow businesses and I had such exposure to a variety of different problems and using my creative brain to solve those problems. And then eventually, I, you know, in addition to having a full-time job, I felt like I still needed an outlet for my creative expression. So I ended up starting a company uh, while working full-time and that company ended up growing pretty quickly. So I kind of just stayed in entrepreneurship. That was my track going forward and So what I was love the it. company called? Uh, my first company was called Try the World, which is a food subscription that sends you international gourmet food to your doorstep. And is, Phoebe, is that how you met? Like, was this a business online meeting or was it like... Uh... Yeah, we met on Angel, Angel.com and uh, uh, at that time I was uh, still in Australia but wanted to grow in the U.S. market, but that's from day one, I, U.S.'s biggest um, market and uh, I always want an uh, attitude to make more impact to become a global brand. So then I would go on Angel.com to look for a partner, a, a strong um, entrepreneur that also understands the U.S. market. 
So, um, yeah, that's how I found Kat. And I sent a set of sheets and she loved it. Her husband loved it. And uh, she jumped right in. <laughs> yes. That's great. What, what was the website again? I'm sorry. Angel.co. Angel.co. Angel. Yeah, Angel. Yeah, Angelist. Yeah, the, the, yeah, Angelist. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be called Angelist. Um, yeah. That's, I think that's the first meeting that I've ever heard of that occurred on it. I mean, maybe it happened, I'm sure that's probably part of what they do, but like, this is the first, like, I've never yeah. talked to founders that met on angel.co. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, Actually, some of I our think, first employees at Attitude, we recruited them all on Angel. It was yeah. such a great mm -hmm. resource for finding entrepreneurial minded, startup minded people yeah. who were willing mm -hmm. to roll up their sleeves and build something from scratch. So I still yeah. think that it's an amazing resource. I have yeah. used it as a job board. It, it, I've used it. I know that it's great for like investment and stuff like that. Um, never occurred to me that it would just be like, I'm going to find my co-founder there. <laughs> I, I, because like a lot of, you know, if you're in the position we are, you end up just talking to people who are like trying to start businesses all the time. I'm sure you mm -hmm. do too. And uh, a very common problem I think is you have someone who's got a great idea. They're a very talented person, but like the, they can't find the tech part of it especially mm -hmm. in software it's like finding the right engine and they use an agency and you're like well that's never going to work and i already know it but i don't know what else to tell you um mm -hmm. so i mean this is this is something another recommendation that i have now you check on angel.co see if you yeah. can um i think we, 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 we're lucky it's the right time right place right circumstance yeah i think so yeah. the stars um, aligned so i want to share yeah, I want to share a revelation that I had last weekend that Kat just brought to my mind. I was reading this Rick Rubin book called The Creative Act, A Way of Being. Have you heard this book? Like Rick Rubin is like this no. huge music producer. Every yeah. single great art, like Jay-Z started with him. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, but this is just all, all genres. Tom Petty mm -hmm. wrote Free Falling mm -hmm. with this guy, right? Like uh, he is incredible he is such an interesting guy and he wrote this book on how he viewed the creative process from the eyes of a producer that's worked with every single great living artist in his observations and i think that in all of the business like so i read this book and i'm like that's my life and i've never heard it articulated that way in the sense that it, it finally made me realize that so much of being an entrepreneur is living the life of an artist and just being mm -hmm. open to whatever is out there in the universe and like trying to harness inspiration and then create this. I mean, I'm software, you guys are physical things, but like manifest it into something that exists and then pass that energy on to some sort of an audience. Mm -hmm. um, I've read 200 business books. Never have I like related to anything as closely as I related to this book about being an artist. So it's like, Kat, it's interesting that you describe entrepreneurship as your creative outlet. Cause like, I think people acknowledge that you need to be creative to be an entrepreneur, but like, I, I just, it never occurred to me that it was so much, it was so similar to creating a great work of art, like the process that you have to go to. Absolutely. Um, Actually, I wanted to become a photographer <laughs> when I was going to college and, uh, you know, I was taking all these classes in photography and I was like, oh, wait a minute. I'm from an immigrant family. How am I going to support myself? So then I was like, oh, OK, I need to find something else. Uh, but then the photography became a part of self-expression in my business as well, uh, because the first business I had was all about content creation and communicating how incredible this product or other foods were. But same thing with attitude. It's all about expressing what is that thing that you're making. So I feel like there's a lot of parallels here. Yeah, I think I mean, my childhood dream is to be a scientist. But then again, I think a lot of also overlay of the scientist mind and artist mind and entrepreneurial science. You also try to develop some new theory, new things, open mind, like if you they always some some science will have a big um, jump when the older generation died and the new scientists because they are not thinking the old way, you know, thinking totally new way. So the same same thing. Um, I think even make physical products. You are like us. We're trying to develop new things or how it can work with other existing um, things. Same as software. You are creating a, a software. Also do new things, right? 
and also be able to kind of tell the world, communicate with the world and touch millions of people. That's in a way also, yeah, same what artists do. So I think scientists, artists, entrepreneurship, is, there's a lot of common um, theme here. For sure, for sure. So can we go back to this, this fabric that you created out of bamboo? Um, yeah. How did you pick bed sheets as the first application for this? I like sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, um, and that's where my uh, former experience uh, lie before I started. Actually, I have over a decade experience helping big company source and develop uh, home products, not fashion products. So I'm not a fashion designer and also don't like fast fashion. So I think a lot of people actually doesn't put enough um, emphasis on, on the best sheets, which you spend, well, for uh, people like sleep, like me, there's eight solid hours on there every night, right? You call clothes, you, you change, you don't wear the same clothes, but for the bed sheet, of course you wash it, but otherwise you will sleep on that eight hours, day in, day night, every day. So that, that, and also it consumes a lot of textile, right? To, to a, a full sheet set, it's about five to six meters. So then if it's unsustainable textile, it's just worse impact. Um, right. A set of sheets is, is consuming a lot of resource if it, the textile is not sustainable. So I think that that's 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 the area I'm familiar with. That's a product I like. You know, I'll use my own bed sheets that I can, you know, st stay in the bed longer and, and really be comfortable. Um, so that's why I picked that. And I never thought and about then... bed sheets before I met Phoebe. To be honest, like I probably was like a regular consumer, yeah. just buying whatever is available and sleeping on cotton, like most people do. Uh, but then when Phoebe sent me the sheets, I had the best sleep of my life. I really had a revelation. I was like, wow, this is the most innovative thing I've ever felt. And I had the best sleep of my life. And my husband loved it too. He's like, Kat, you have to join this company. This is amazing. <laughs> I mean, you know, the proof's in the pudding, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a, great, a great product just makes everything else easy, mm -hmm. um, which I love. Uh, so you had some pants on when I was sitting next to you at dinner, Kat, they yes. were also this fabric. They were also made so out like, of our clean bamboo, yeah. What's, 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 what's the timeline? It's like, Phoebe was like, attitude was sheets in Australia or the East or whatever. And then you're like, you yes. wanted to expand. So like, how did it, how did it sort of go from, you know, selling 100 sets of sheets to like, we need to expand to the US and then we need to get into other stuff and all that. Yeah, you know, early days, we, we really focused on, on bedding, um, but Australia is always, I know it's a testing ground for refined products and to learn about marketing, branding. I'm not a marketing branding expert, but so that's why I always wanna, wanted a co-founder that's strong in that and also that together we can really grow into the U.S. market that is the biggest single you know, language yeah, consumer market in the world to make more impact. Um, so that's why, why I started Go On Angel list at that time. Um, and we launched into US end of 2017. And we grow into also then a bit peep, uh, loungewear, sleepwear is also by customers request, because they like our fabric so much. And that's, oh, we're just wrapping in our flashy and lounging around. Can you make that into proper, you know, things we can wear? Um, we say, yeah, sure. It's, it's that same fabric. It's more about different cuts and sew. That's a relatively easy expansion. And then we also have toweling fabric. We actually yesterday just launched our vegan cashmere throw blanket, kind of still 100% clean bamboo, but feel touch and feel like real cashmere. If we don't tell people, people touch it, oh, it's cashmere, but no, it's vegan. It's, it's wow. all bamboo. Yeah, that blows people's mind off when they <laughs> touch it and we don't tell what it is made. <laughs> it just launched yesterday on our website. Wow, cool. I'm, I'm go really excited stuff. about it. I'm going to go buy all this stuff after this, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, my hus husband is li living in the, the throw blanket every, every day. He doesn't care about colors. So I have a, like a pink sample. I don't care. It's so comfortable. It's like <laughs> wrapping and watch TV. It's so cozy. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So what is the vision for like, I mean, do you want like you don't like fast fashion? Phoebe, how do you feel about this? Like, do you are we? Like, is this a line expansion or is it just like, there are so many applications for this amazing, amazing mm -hmm. fabric. We're just going to keep expanding this, you know, sort of doing experiments, figuring out. 
Like, what's the what's the five yeah. and ten year? Plan? I mean, our, our our vision is to replace as much unconventional textile. Uh, sorry, to replace as much conventional textiles as we can in the industry, which textiles is the number two most polluting industry in the world, and it emits ten percent of all CO two emissions. So. As a direct-to-consumer brand, we're definitely making a dent here, but we're also starting to partner with other brands to use our materials to create categories of products that we probably would never make as a direct-to-consumer brand. So we want to expand our environmental impact as much as we can with this dual-prong strategy. And how do you prioritize this is like the question for the entrepreneur, right? Like, like if I don't know much about your industry, but I, the, I'm sitting here listening to you and the possibility, possibility literally seems infinite. Like, how would you, how do you, like, for instance, you're like, we're teaming up with other brands to do, how do you even start? What, what brands, you know, it, who do you call there, right? Like, like how do you prioritize you know, well, what's so next? our direct-to-consumer is still the primary mm -hmm. part of our business, and there's just so much opportunity here within kind of yeah. our customer base. They're expecting certain things from us. They're you know they're giving us feedback in terms of what they really love and what they would like to see from Attitude. So we take that feedback and uh, you know, take that into account when we think about our product strategy. But from a B two B perspective. It's a nascent business and it all comes through introductions. Like we're literally just using our investors and our, our network to talk to the right people at, you know, organizations that have a big impact. Right. Cool. And then what is even like the, what is the motion there? Is it like, oh, you meet so-and-so, they have headquarters in some other city, like you have a phone call. It's like, well, let me send you some samples. Like how? Exactly. <laughs> That's how it is. Yeah. I mean, thank yeah. God for Zoom meetings nowadays. Yeah. You can yeah. do so yeah. much virtually, and so it's it's really how we've been doing that. Yeah. Right. Um, cool. How was the experience of living through COVID, and how did it affect your business? And like, what was it like the before, during, and after? Like, it is a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, yeah, I think. When COVID hit, we're actually raising our seed round, and we we almost thought we would lose that round. You know, before it's all great, we we are fast growing, and we are closing a seed round, everything looks great, and so like COVID hit because it's not like it's bad for actually e-commerce or home business. After two months, people realize it, but that March and April is scary times. Nobody's investing, everyone just freeze mode until to figure out what's going on here. Also, same same here, but we'll be able to stabilize business still close the round and actually after may the business exploded because the home sector is is you know where people spent money during COVID. but that's also created again like many other brands uh, not enough stock you know and then the shipping is slow and expensive but i think we navigated that it's a, it's a very busy year um in 2021 still still growing fast but kind of slowed down a bit. Now 2022, everyone talk, is talking about recession. So it has been an up-down journey, yeah. but as an entrepreneur, it's it's kind of normal. Uh, there's always problem need to, new problem need to solve. Yeah. Got it. So were there any like, like were you still receiving product to give to people or were the like supply chain, like was there like, a story of like a huge disaster during COVID or was it just like everything is no, moving slower and we have to navigate this? Yeah, it's just a bit slow. No, not they never totally stopped. So we're lucky. So, but because of that experience, we are yet yeah, more diverse of our supply chain to into different regions and more near shore anyway. We want our supply chain to be more near shore. Uh, so there's much benefit of that, but COVID just accelerate that movement. Uh, so I think for us is to learn about, okay, maybe this thing will hit again. So how you are retooling your organization, your supply chain to what if some other pandemic hit again, you know, you already learned from the first that a lot of certain mistakes won't happen again. Yeah. Things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's just like, stay nimble remote. I mean, what, what yeah. types of things, I mean, I can guess, right? Like, 
Yeah. We need to be able to function 100 percent on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. We need exactly. to have, a, like you said, regionally diversified supply chain. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned re you raised a seed round. Before that, when you were in Australia, were you just bootstrapping it? Like how? Yeah, yeah it's totally bootstrap. Um, using what was the motivation uh, for the fundraise? For growth, because we grow fast. We we need um, for. for, for for more team members, for more stock, for more to invest into product development. Got it. Um, are you fundraising now again? Like some people are kind of always in like a motion of just- We, we will probably start a bit later. Um, we'll probably do a, a series A next round for more investment into research and development and expansion into different markets. Are you poking investors right now, or is it just like your your head's down grinding? Like my, my question is like, have you observed, I mean, clearly if you look at equity prices of things that were exciting, they're like much lower. <laughs> like, have you sensed that there's like a reluctance to deploy capital still? I think still, there's a concern like right now. I think there's still recession concerns, especially if you're a direct to consumer brand, it's really difficult right now. So I would say, it's not the best time. Uh, I think similar to how when COVID was just you know starting, people are really concerned about the future. And I think we're experiencing a similar concern right now where people are hesitant to write checks, especially in products uh, companies. Um, so I think for us, it, it's really focusing on our innovation right now. That's the main um, use of our time. Yeah. These investors who put money in stuff like us, it's like, they just want stories, <laughs> you know? Like they want this like innovative thing that has like some, like uh, a little bit of proof, but like, I, I, I think it's a really smart thing you're doing. Um, what is the single most excited thing, uh, uh, excited, sorry, what are you most excited about that you're working on like right this second? Um a totally new fabrication we're launching mid, mid this year. Um, so it kind of feel very different to our current fabrication, which is, has been our bread bad for a couple of years. So definitely, I think um, that's very exciting. So it's a full launch, including not just bedding and also there's towel and that same material. So it's a new material. It's also used innovative way. Um, it's not just bamboo, it's blend with another very sustainable fiber. Um, also, uh, first to market. Uh, nobody have done it that way before, so that's that's very exciting on the product side. Great. And I'm really excited on our impact report that we will be launching in a couple months uh, about last year, and we'll be sharing incredible impact metrics uh, from a sustainability perspective. So, everything in terms of water savings. So, you know, the number of gallons that we've actually saved because we do save 99% of water versus cotton. And CO2 I mean, that's emissions. Such a crazy stat. <laughs> it is amazing. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, before joining Attitude, I, I never knew how bad cotton really is for the environment. It's actually the thirstiest and the dirtiest crop on earth. Uh, so it takes up a lot of water uh, to, to grow. Uh, and it also, the conventional way of growing cotton is with a lot of pesticides and fertilizer. So it's terrible for the land that it grows on. It completely depletes lands. It emits a lot of emissions from fertilizer that's being used. So in general, it's not hard to save 99% of water versus cotton because it's just so thirsty. But uh, bamboo yeah. is actually grown 100% on rainwater, the type of bamboo that we source. Uh, so that's where the savings come from, but also from the fact that we recycle water in our process up to 200 times and that saves a significant chunk as well. Wow. Um, so can we talk about some more impact type of things? What does it actually mean to be B Corp Plus? I feel like I should know this and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so B Corp is, is, is kind of a standard, really, it's not just about eco-friendly, it's also your social compliance, how you treat your workers, uh, how you treat your customers, um, so it's overall how you treat your suppliers. So it's it's environment and social impact together. It's very difficult to 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 get. Took us eighteen months, um, 
but it's definitely worth it. I think it's not just about certification, also that's a framework they teach you how to be better, right? Since you, there's hundreds and hundreds of questions, you, you all have to get data and answer, then it's kind of created a roadmap. Oh, this I get a low point. Okay, that's opportunity to improve going forward because they will recertify you every three years. So, so kind of how we keep improving to keep our you know, scores uh, get higher and higher. We were certified had, uh, with a very high score, 102. Um, normal co company only have 50, um, and uh, to, to be a B Corp, you need 80, so it's already difficult, but we have like double the points of usual company out there would get, ever get, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And is it actually like, so this is just a designation, it's not like a legal mm -hmm. structure? It is, we have to change, like, so we are, are, are like, uh, a B Corp kind of a structure. It's in our bylaw. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Got it. Um, where did you even find out about that? <laughs> like, how did you know? I mean, is it just you, since you exist in this sort of like impact world, it's like a thing? Uh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. But I think they also get more and more awareness. People recognize the B Corp, uh, knowing mm -hmm. that it's the highest standard, especially there's so many greenwash going on. And it's not just like your environment, right? You have to care about other things, your people. Um, um, I think I'm more learn about because I, I really, uh, you know, admire what Pentagonia is doing. So, so they are a B Corp. Uh, I think the B Corp, uh, they also supporting a lot, doing a lot of work with B Corp. Um, uh, so that's, I think that's how I know about it and I'm really what was inspired to be a B Corp. And there's actually a growing movement of companies that are both B Corp and 1% for the planet. So 1% for the planet is also a designation that says that you're committing to donate 1% of your sales to environmental nonprofits. And so there is a growing community of companies that are both B Corp and 1% for the planet. Awesome. Something just popped into my head that I want to ask you. So the thing that I think is one of the things I think is most interesting about Elon is he's like, I'm going to make a car that's electric, but it's going to be so much better than a normal car that people will have to use it. Same, same <laughs> like, here. Yes. Is that, I was just going to ask you, does that resonate yeah. with you? Is yeah, that you like exactly. where you started? Because I'm a consumer myself. I don't want to, yeah, I, I want to be sustainable, but not to suffer lifestyle, you know, for, for our less performing product and cost more. But if you make a better performed product on par of the price with the conventional product and then, and also eco-friendly, well, then it's a why not question, right? right? So I think same like the, the Tesla story, it's like, why not? Yeah. Yeah. We really see attitude as the Tesla of sheets. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like that. way better quality sheet set and it's sustainable too. I love that. Yeah. I always thought that organic milk caught on because the expiration date is like a month longer than normal milk. <laughs> it, check it out sometime in the grocery store. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I mean, I'm just like not a milk drinker. I just like splash some in my coffee, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so like, I'm not like going through, you know, but it's just, it, it, it was another one of these things where it's like, I'm betting that one of the reasons why that movement for milk caught on is because it lasts so much longer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, another observation. Uh, okay. More impact. What is the founder's pledge? So the founder's pl pledge is that our founders kind of pledge a percentage of their future exit value. And then, so the, the founder of the founder's pledge is also a former investment people, but he think when well, you don't know that exit is easy, it's actually psychologically you're easy to pledge a bigger percentage. But when they wait, maybe 10 years later, you, you get really big and you're already committed. Um, and that also goes to environment related um, and fun. Um, so like, you don't know what they said, you would give a high percentage once you know how big is that maybe it's, it's a lot of dollars. So that's his thesis. So he started this organization. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of supporters like Founders, when we are still seed round or Series A, don't know what's the future outcome, but you're already pre-committed. I'm committed to this, help the planet sustainability. I will commit it 
a certain you know percentage of sign a legal document um, and they also help educate how what type of you know more efficient um, charity you should donate to right the, the modern way like we really we have worked with charity water we really love them it's like also use modern ways I think technology to help to make it that the money goes a longer way so they're also about how to give you the education or when you're at that point already there's infrastructure to to how to use those donation money the most efficient way create the most impact so I quite like that that sorts instead of oh you just donate money and that's the end of the story but how is it being used is it effective right you know so they also talk about return on investment it's not just because it's donation is so the return on investment as for impact they give you one dollar is that create ten dollar impact you know that's how they look at things so I really like that 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 way of thinking it's very entrepreneurial sure. instead of traditional NGL type of run you know yeah amazing yeah I'm not doing that's their KPI so. yeah. <laughs> yeah you give me one dollar I try to give you as much as impact you could see so yeah yeah <laughs> incredible well mm -hmm. you two embody what I love about this customer base that we have now mm -hmm. it's like I feel like there is a, um, a common theme of people in this audience that like makes it to successful Shopify stores where mm -hmm. A, they're so gifted because you're forced to deal with these three totally different businesses of like manufacturing and inventory management, and supply chain management mm -hmm. and digital direct to consumer experience, you know, all of this marketing and everything. Like you mm -hmm. just have to be an incredible person to, to do mm -hmm. that. And then there's this overarching theme of most of them truly believe that they're improving the world. I mean, mm -hmm. you obviously are <laughs> like, it's like, it's like every part of this is that story. Um, I just think it's so great. And, and it's, you know, the last company I had the, co the customer base, we were poaching customers from this company called constant contact and like, uh -huh. they were just like main street flower shops, you know, mm -hmm. barely making it or whatever. And it was, it was so different to build for them because a they were very untechnologically savvy and b mm -hmm. they weren't you they didn't have good enough businesses to where you could actually show them incremental that mattered mm -hmm. so like where are you as a tech vendor it's like you're nowhere mm -hmm. um so i just uh I'm, I'm like loving every day of my life because you know people like you are in it basically it's like this these such incredible mm -hmm. stories that i just love sharing with people so thank you for coming. Thank you for coming on and sharing the story of attitude. I mean, it's like so awesome that you're able to make such great things and be so much more environmentally friendly. So thank cool. you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So I like wrapping it up with these two questions. And I'll ask each of you, if you could write one thing on a billboard, what would it be? Phoebe first? Oh, I think we, we have the same thing as if they have thought about it, if we, you know, uh, that would be clean bamboo is not the bamboo, you know. And what do you mean because by it, that? Because bamboo textile out there for 20, 30 years, but the old conventional way is use toxic uh, 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 chemical to process it. Got so it. they are the bamboo rayon, viscous type, but while clean yeah. bamboo use non-toxic chemical, I think that also be consumers interest oh what do you mean what the is the, not the bamboo i know so that people will kind of go and check it out so kind of create curiosity for awareness great the cat i was gonna say the same thing okay, <laughs> <Boom. Yes. Yeah. laughs> okay and then the final five where do you live both of you we're both in la in los angeles yeah got it right. and then and then family status do you do you, have, you i know cat mm -hmm. you have kids but yeah, yeah, I'm married. Uh, Australian husband moved, moved to LA with me. Perfect. Um, what is your favorite book? Mine is uh, Let My People Surfing, uh, which is also written by the founder of um, Pentagonia. I love that. It's like, oh, you know, the dream, like you can have a profitable business and uh, your people is happy. They, they're actually efficient. When you let them do what they love and they come back recharge and be more creative a lot of things it's not about yeah working longer hours about creativity and working better or more smarter there's a lot of things you can use technology to do it these days right as ai or whatever but the human need to do the high the strategic the creative work uh, mm -hmm. so you know mm -hmm. 
What about you, Kat? I was going to say uh, a book I read recently is Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind ah. by mm-hmm. Yuval Noah Harari. So that's, uh, it, it really talks about the history of our species, the Homo sapiens, and going from the Stone Age up to the 21st century, and also how we might evolve in the future. And I, I think we should all be aware of this history. Perfect. Um, do you have someone you're following on social media that is, you think is remarkable and worth it? Yes, yeah. I really love the garbage queen. <laughs> so uh, this, this uh, amazing content creator talks about the positive environmental news and is a really great educator in terms of climate change, as well as all the cool things that are happening to combat climate change. And uh, I think, and I agree with her, that uh, we need to be focused on a very optimistic vision of our planet and that we can solve this. It just takes, you know, people's awareness and actually working on it. Awesome. Well, I'm kind of really detox a bit from social media, but I follow Kat on Instagram where I can get a lot of the good <laughs> information. <laughs> and Kat's two beautiful daughter, um, you know, they have their separate Instagram account. Like, that's like, look at this cute, cute babies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And then the favorite, your favorite vacation you've ever been on. Oh, favorite vacation. Uh, a couple of years, I, uh, I did a two-year trip in the Taiwan. That was great. And recently, I just came back from the Caribbean. That's also great. But also learning how damage after uh, hurricanes kind of every year became bigger and bigger. That's climate change, right? Everywhere you go to travel, you start to see the, the evidence. And it's not like, oh, yeah, it's something our children need to worry. Next generation, no, you need to worry now. Um, it's 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 there it's it's taking human life so yeah my favorite and most recent one was going to bali it was my first time and it's just so gorgeous and uh yeah for me it was also a social media detox and in some way i was doing a lot of yoga and spending time with my best friends and my sister and that was really great weren't you contemplating if you could move there did i did about, did we talk about this yes yeah. yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah. There are oh, so many but, digital nomads there. It's great. Yeah, it's a great yeah, place yeah. To, yeah. to live yeah. and work. It's fantastic. But Ken, you also mentioned where you go snorkeling and then we come up or the plastic bottle, right? Yeah, unfortunately, like, there was some pollution there when you go snorkeling. And they have amazing corals, actually, which is great mm-hmm. that it's still preserved. Uh, but um, yeah, they, they can't control the plastic pollution. So that is a big problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's sad. I remember... I went to some place in the northeast called ED or Edo or something to like uh, to snor- to with the scuba, uh, and I was scuba. uncertified. But yeah. there was a shipwreck that was like 16 uh. meters deep, and you could go 16 meters deep if you're uncertified. Yeah. I could not believe it. It was like the people who made the Little Mermaid must yeah. have seen what I saw <laughs> that day because it was like this world of immense beauty underwater you know i just it was i've never experienced anything like it and like really? the shipwreck framed everything up so well and it was mm-hmm. like on like a, a slope you know mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. just incredible mm-hmm. like it really yeah, the reminds ocean is you just so incredible yeah experience like that reminds you of why this is so important you know mm-hmm. like there is such beauty under there mm-hmm. um great thank you so much where can we learn about you, follow you, um, go buy, on our stuff, website. Buy, buy stuff from you, the whole thing. <laughs> so our website is the best place, uh, www.etitude.com, E-T-T-I-T-U-D-E.com. So to remember it, it's basically like attitude with an E because it's eco attitude. And you can also follow us on Instagram, Attitude Store. Amazing. Kat, Phoebe, thank you so much.